Okay, welcome back. It's the Squadcast, episode 35. Producer Clark here. My buddy Mad Max is over to my right. Uh, we got the Flamingos in the Blue Jays jersey here tonight, rocking it. Max, how you feeling tonight, my man? Clark, does it really matter how I'm feeling? How, how, how are you? Well, I guess it kind of does, but how are you feeling? How I'm, are you doing tonight, Clark? I'm masking a lot of deep depression, Max. <laughs> It's great. I can uh, tell. Yes, uh, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get into a great conversation here tonight. Uh, I'm sure we got our 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 good friends checking in on the comment wall already. I see my my good friend, my positive friend Brady Witz checking in. Brady, how are you doing tonight, Brady? I'm sure you're just living life, <laughs> flying high, Brady. Uh, but John Ohm's checking in, saying "Go Jets, go." Uh, Lindsay's checking in. Hello, Squadcast team. Hello, Lindsay. Uh, we got John Ohm again checking in. Uh, John O'Flynn from North Vancouver checking in. Uh, apparently, uh, only in, in only 465 shows, uh, we're going to have our Quinn Centenary. Quinn Centenary. Uh, which I guess is our five. Is that like an Arby's century. menu item? I've never heard Arby's of Quinn Centenary. <laughs> yes, that's a, that is the Arby's menu item. If you order that, you get... beef, they extra put, cheese. They put all of okay. their meat on one sandwich. It's the Quinn Centenary. <laughs> nice. That's good. good stuff. Actually, uh, we should probably talk to Arby's about that. We probably should. Uh, Janelle Barkman's checking in. Hi, my boys. And she sent us some stars. Thank you, Janelle. Thank As you, Janelle. always, you're amazing. Um... We're going to get into the show here in just a sec. We've had a bit of a scrambly start to the show. Uh, some things going on uh, with me and Max like minutes before we went live. But we're having a good time. There's a ton to talk about tonight. And we want you guys to get in your questions and comments all night long. So make sure you ask us anything throughout the night. Alan, I'm testing you early. Ask us anything throughout the night. Send in your comments. Send in your questions. If you want to talk about certain topics, especially with the NHL playoffs, everybody's got their own team. Send them in now. Uh, we'll get to it hopefully throughout the night. You're, we're going to talk. risk opening Pandora's box with the ask us anything like this is going to be like Ryan Leslie I know you're tuned in right now I apologize but this could turn into an hour and a half of Clark just having to answer what are the Leafs going to do with the offseason is Dubas fired is Sheldon Keefe fired is Mitch Marty getting traded is as I said last Vince? week on the show Max uh, follow me on TikTok and we can do it <laughs> over there uh, if you want to get super super deep onto all that stuff Clark's I will campfire be campfire therapy sessions I will be having my Clark's campfire therapy sessions over on TikTok <laughs> for the remainder of the summer now that I have uh uh, not as much vested interest in the playoffs, uh, of <laughs> hey, course. the Blue Jays are still there to watch. Come on. Right. Now, uh, golf course is there to hit. Speaking of vested interests, our good friends at Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions hey. are the proud supporters of this broadcast. Uh, make sure, if you guys are interested in finding out how you can uh, – if it, maximize the efficiency of your business uh, if you need anything uh, to make sure your business runs smoothly uh, your supplies are stocked up your office is looking sharp uh, you need flamingos rockstar supply chain yeah flamingos that's where we I'm got not gonna from. lie I didn't realize how much I needed flamingos in my life before they graced our set I and didn't now, realize it. And now it's you a need game flamingos. Like I might order changer. more flamingos gonna have from to. Rockstar. And just so shiny. Just, again, they're the, great. The they're products they're are high fantastic. quality flamingos. I wasn't expecting. They're like metal. Like it's, they're Rocks pretty fancy. Rocks and Dar, man. Rocks and Dar. Uh, doing anyways, uh, don't rack your brain figuring out how to get everything you need for your business. Give Roxanne and Darnell a call today and they'll do it for you. Uh, Rockstar.com for more information. Our good friends. They're hanging out right over my shoulder here. Their logo's right up here. They're good people. Uh, we, we love folks. good people here, Max. You Absolutely, know that. we do. Uh, Max, speaking of good people, uh, you're one of them. Break down the show for me tonight, if you don't mind, good sir. Episode 35. Hey, that was J.S. Jaguar. Number 35? Number 35. There you we go. got lots to talk tonight, including a whole lot of Leafs fans in a perennial state of despair. <sighs> the puck has been dropped on the second round of the playoffs as we dive into some intriguing matchups as the Leafs choking has fans experiencing a series <sighs> of coughs. You, you weren't hot. You weren't holding back on this intro, were well, you? Well, you called me a nice guy. I don't know why. Nope. Look at that. Clearly, Rhyme, I shouldn't have said that. All the way through. See what I did there, Clark. Yeah, you're killing so me. So you saw it. Good stuff. Yeah. Ryan Leslie <laughs> comes in to talk to us about some hockey. What's in store for the Canadian teams this offseason? His sights will be as good as any. Oh, yeah. The Jays have been meh, and that's all right. Man, they need George Springer Brack to truly take flight. That's true. Good Thanks rhyme. for tuning in. Clark, it's going to be a gooder. Remind me again, what, what lead did the Leafs have in the series? So close to the second round. They sure were. Did you just rhyme gooder with sure were? Yep. Not bad. Sure did. Not bad. Nailed it. 
A plus for creativity points. And effort. Uh, and effort. Tools. Top of the order tonight is going to be brought to you by our good friends at Hoop Life Basketball. Uh, and they are coming up later in the show with a large, I'm going to put it as wide as the screen is, a large announcement I think it might tonight. even be bigger than that. Might be bigger than that. Uh, it's it, they're, they're marking it as one of the largest announcements in Saskatchewan basketball history. History, not underselling it either. Uh, so we're going, we're going in with them after our good buddy Ryan Leslie in our next segment. But we have to get to the top of the order first, which is the hottest topics. And uh, speaking of hot topics, Max, <laughs> you want to get into burning jerseys, and we're going to get into that <sighs> right away off the top, Max. I know we were going to talk about the Leafs first. I'm going to get into this because it's kind of talking about the Leafs. But hot topics. Uh, there is video after video after video of Leaf fans uh, who are, I guess, no longer fans burning their jerseys. We've seen Marner jerseys. We've seen Matthews. I've seen Tavares. Um, I don't know who else I've seen. I'm sure there's lots out there. But, uh, Max, you have a little bone to pick with people who burn jerseys. Just going to make sure that my mic is nice and stable for this rant yeah, before make I go sure off your, here. You make sure your laptop is secured down so it doesn't fly off here. To borrow a line from the great Peter Griffin, you know what really grinds my gears, Clark? Yes. I do, because you told me about it before the show. I did, I did. People who burn jerseys. Now, folks, I get it. It's not just Leaf fans. We've seen it with Cleveland Cavaliers fans when LeBron left town. We've seen it um, with numerous sports teams. There's examples of this. Jerseys hitting the ice, jerseys being burned. People. I don't know about you, but I work hard for my money. Do you? I, I have not been known to do that. You yet. have been known to do that from yeah. time to time. Yeah. As I'm like $200 ish for like an authentic jersey, like that Bo Bichette jersey that's gracing our stage right now. I, I just don't get it, Clark. At the end of the day, like there's sports fandom, there's things that go on in this world that are just too devastating to even talk about on, on some programming. Sports are an escape, sports allow us the opportunity to disconnect from the world a little bit. And you're allowed to be passionate, you're allowed to be. That's totally fine. But don't give me this where you're going to go throw $200 right into a fire pit for 200 views on social media. Yeah, that's Let's the thing. Let's be smarter than that, people. Let's just yeah. really get better. And I could go on this for 10 more minutes, so I won't. But come on, people. Like, I, if for all the people burning Leafs jerseys this week, I expect you not to tune into a single game next year. Because you're telling me that you're not a true fan of the team if you're doing that crap. Right. So this is not the After Dark show. We'll get to that, how I really <laughs> feel coming up in a couple of weeks when we unleash that. But Maybe this way, weekend, yeah. That's my feelings on it. I don't know what your thoughts are, but to me it's just absolute insanity when I ever see it on social media. It's ridiculous. Things you could do instead of burning a jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, donate it. Uh, keep it in your closet. Uh, give it to a family member. Um, there's so many things. Very valid. All, all there's, of them There's valid. three things. There's probably more. Uh, and like you said, I loved your point to get 200 views on Twitter. Like, yeah. and, and who, what is this benefiting? Are you, are, does Kyle Dubas see your video and decide that, you know, he's not going to, uh, he's going to follow your advice and maybe he's going to do something different because you burned your Jersey. Nope, probably not. Nope. Uh, they got your money already. You're not proving anything to anybody. Anyways, like you said, 10 minute conversation, at least at minimum. Uh, so, um, Anyways, we will we'll get into <laughs> the Leafs now. I got you a little hot too. I yeah. know. It's, no, I'm just it's, Ryan. Ryan Leslie is sending me a text. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna be getting to Ryan Leslie in about seven or eight minutes. Excellent. Uh, and then we'll go about uh, we'll we'll get into that with him in Good a minute. Stuff. But uh, let's let's just quickly touch on the Leafs collapse. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they were up three to one. Uh, that's the topic that everyone's asking me how how I'm doing right now. Uh, we got a comment. Uh, be truthful. <laughs> it's okay. This is a safe space. There's the boys. Alan found a great picture. Thanks, Alan. <laughs> um, oh, now Mitch. where was? Poor Mitch. Adam Schultz says, Max, how's Clark doing? Why don't you just ask me? <laughs> I'll tell you. You got him right here, uh, right now. Yeah, there was another one in here too. Uh, let's see. In all fairness, people shouldn't even buy Leafs jerseys, so burning them isn't a big deal. Plus, they spent twice that on tickets, Emery Wolf says. Thanks, Emery. Um, I can understand when a, your team loses, a person is upset, but burning jerseys is just childish. Then watch, in four months, they'll buy another jersey, and they're right back on the bandwagon. And the team loves it, so I mean, oh, uh, Janelle's on board with you, Max. It's just a lack of control of emotions. Got to appreciate the whole spectrum of fandom, says Karsten. Uh, go punch a pillow. Yeah. Uh, says Brady. Uh, so anyways, uh, but the Leafs lose uh, game seven after they were up 3-1, and everyone's asking me how I'm doing. Uh, obviously, I'm not doing great. Uh, you know, I've been better, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to, you know, 
take a step back and take this uh, a little differently than a lot of Leaf fans seem As to be. As you said, you're 30 years old. You've matured. Yes, you, you I've have, matured. You've matured. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not the same fan as I was when I was 22 because, you know, eight, nine years ago, I probably would have been not burning jerseys, but I would have been freaking out a little <laughs> you bit more. You would have held it over the fireplace. Now, though? here's the Just one to... thing that I will say that, you know, everyone's asking me, are you super mad? Are they done? Should they dump everybody? Should they start over? Should they fire Keefe? To me... This team is just starting to enter the phase where they're supposed to be contenders each and every year. This, is, this to me, is the first year they're actually at the status where they're considered that good. Like, they're not even done yet. They're not even in their finished form. Okay. Last year, they were good, uh, but they, they fired their coach halfway through the year. To me, that's a transition year. That's not your year to go. Uh, Habs, they didn't Habs do, did that this year too, Clark. They didn't do any moves at the trade <laughs> deadline last year. This year was their first year where, they're like, where they actually committed mm -hmm. to being what they thought was going to be a contender. So for me, I'm looking at this as the start of their winning window. I'm not looking at this as they've struggled for four years. Mm -hmm. Those four other years that they lost in the first round to Boston and Washington and Columbus, whatever you want to call that last year, they were not in their winning window. They were still developing. Most of those years, they were massive underdogs, especially against Washington that year, Boston that first year, et cetera. They weren't at the point now where they are uh, where they're actually considered a team that could win. Now, here's where I'm thinking this is I'm actually on board with the strategy of maybe giving this team another shot, keeping this core together, keeping, you know, getting a little consistency and stability in the organization where they grow together and win together and become that contender each and every single year. But this is what happened with Washington. This is what happened with uh, Detroit during Steve Eiserman's come up. This is what happened with the Pittsburgh Penguins. This is what happened with all the organizations that became the uber successful organizations. They struggled for a little bit, uh, especially Washington. Look at Washington. With Ovechkin there, they lost like 11 straight years in the, either the first or second round in pretty disappointing fashion and finally broke through the one year and won the Stanley Cup. So if you're looking at it that way, Austin Matthews is 23, Mitch Marner's 23. They're both in that age range. Nylander's a year older. Uh, they're at a point right now where they could hypothetically, if they keep it together, be this very successful franchise and keep building around those guys for the next six or seven years, eight years. And this is just the beginning. So for everybody to be giving up now is is a terrible decision because this is where you start getting more invested right now, not jumping off the bandwagon now. This is where their window begins, you guys. So for, for me, I'm looking at everybody freaking out and I'm like, guys, you're looking at it completely wrong. They've lost, yes, but they've been underdogs. This is their first year. Anyways, that could be a start of another hour-long conversation. I'm gonna, I think it was. No, that was four <laughs> minutes. I, I looked. It was four you minutes or less. You doubled up on your allotted time. It's okay, though. We're good. I think that <laughs> that kind of covers my overall thoughts on it. I could say a lot more, but I don't have enough time. You the high time. road there. That's... I don't have enough time, and I don't want to keep Ryan Leslie waiting too much longer. Good so, call. Uh, let's just look at a couple of comments. We'll skim through the rest of our topics and look at our vote, our Vigor fan vote today, which I think is an interesting uh, result. John Ohm says, well said, Clark. Thank you, John. Uh, we should clip that. Uh, Janelle Barkman says, preach. Janelle knows. She watches my TikTok lives, Janelle. Uh, have a great show, Donna says. Thank you, Donna. Uh, Myron says, oh, this is Myron. Myron, is this you from TikTok, Myron? Oh, heck yeah. Uh, he says, absolutely, Clark. When Shanahan was named president, he said it was going to be about five years before the Leafs were even competitive. It has been five years, and I'm not panicking about the state of the franchise. That's my buddy Myron from TikTok. Myron's a great dude. Uh, Mark Zosel says, you have to learn how to lose before you can win. Learn from your mistakes. Fix them. Uh, so anyways, that's kind of my thoughts. What do you think, Max? Any quick thoughts before we move on? No, because as somebody on the other side of the happy that the Leafs jokes are going to continue for another year, I've got an essay's worth of rebuttals to nearly all of those points. But you know what? Hey, good for you for taking the high road, my friend. I'm trying. It is what I'm it trying. is. So I'll take my six seconds on the Predators. Yes, the Predators <laughs> lost after going into four straight overtime games against the Carolina Hurricanes. I... I'm very optimistic about the future, but I am certainly not, uh, I guess, what's the best way to say it, disillusioned about the way that their season ended. It was a tough way to go, but uh, I'm very optimistic about UC Saros and co., and that's the biggest priority of their offseason. Done! Sign okay, UC that was Saros. like 14 seconds. Nailed it. But for, to me, the Predators are at the at a different point in their winning window than the Leafs are completely. It's two different franchises, but mm -hmm. you still have optimism because you know that the team is built around some guys that 
are able to have success because you've been through a couple of rounds. You've been to the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, the Leafs are just starting that. So that's where I'm at, where I'm like... Well, the Leafs have been starting on that since 1967. Okay, but, uh, let's, let's, let's Let's get on that. A revisionist um, history is always easy, Max. That's right. The well, Jets and Habs are kicking <laughs> off round two. We're going to get into that with Ryan Leslie. We're going to save that one for Ryan. Uh, other rounds, obviously, the Islanders-Boston series is at 1-1. Is it uh, a revision if it's the truth? Uh, Max, Sorry, just, I'm just asking. Islanders Boston are at 1-1. <laughs> uh, Islanders win in overtime last game to kind of even up the series. That's going to be a good series going forward. Yep. Tampa Bay, Carolina, Max, you have your eye on that one because Absolutely. Carolina, obviously it's your division as a mm-hmm. Predators fan. Uh, it is one nothing Tampa. It was 2-1 game, game one, very yeah. close. And it looks like tonight it is one nothing Tampa at the end of the second period. Yeah. So another close one tonight. And then we're looking Goal-tending at... Goal. Uh, the West, of course, with the Golden Knights Avalanche. Avalanche stomped them 7-1 in Game 1. And, of course, the big decision was Robin Lehner starting. We're going to get into that again with Ryan Leslie a little bit as well. Uh, the World Championships, Max. Uh, Canada struggled, but it sounds like they're in the medal round after they got some reinforcements. Um, I personally haven't been watching this one. Have you been watching any of it? I, I'm not going to lie. No, I haven't. The only thing I know is that Adam Henrique is the captain. They've struggled a little bit through uh, the round robin, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Ah, the World Ch- Championships, it's such, a, it's such a weird time of year to really be invested in it. Like, do you go to a lot of hockey fans, and are you a Team Canada fan first? Not right. necessarily. That's why they give the international tournaments their shine on their own. Yeah. And, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just not for me when the Stanley Cup playoffs are going on. But either way, go Canada. All right. Go Canada. You know what, Max? We're going to head to a break. We're going to go uh, to Ryan Leslie right after this break. Ryan, hang tight. We're coming your way, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. IKS Live, the proud producer of The Rod Peterson Show and The Recovery Hour. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com.
right, welcome back to our to the Squadcast. We are going to head out right to our video guest right now. Our VIP guest tonight joins us from Cowtown, Max, Calgary, Alberta, uh, on the eve of the second round of the NHL North Division playoffs, right in the heart of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Ryan Leslie from Sportsnet. Ryan, how are you doing tonight? Thanks for joining us. Boys, good to be with you. What's going on? Uh, you know, just uh, chilling. I got this nice sweater here, courtesy of our good friends at How We Now We Go uh, Sports and Lifestyle. Thank you for that, by the way. I did, uh, I'm not oh, mad at good all. Good people with a great cause. That's awesome <laughs> stuff. I love to see you in it. Absolutely. Now, Ryan, I want to start off uh, with what happened about 24 hours ago uh, as I'm talking to you today. Uh, now, you're from Owen Sound, Ontario, uh, Port Dover, uh, where I've learned in the last couple of weeks. Uh, you must have gotten uh, a few family members uh, maybe getting a little upset with what happened last night. Uh, can, you, can you tell me, first off, uh, I'm sure you do have uh, some family members just growing up in Ontario as Leaf fans. Do you know any good therapists, Ryan? <laughs> Did I hear you say something earlier about they're just starting off, they're just, were you trying to... He was, sell some line of garbage about was, how they're just oh. starting into some new. I'm but just. I'm trying to stay stop. sane. I'm trying to stay. No, sane. no. You, that's that's embarrassing. It's uh, absolutely atrocious. Um, I don't need to tell you or anybody watching or listening uh, about the point uh, discrepancy between the two teams. The seven, two, and one head to head. The expectations of a lifetime. Do you know? I'm going to tell you a little story. When uh, I grew up in southern Ontario, and I I grew up a Habs fan. Um, but everybody around me was a Leafs fan. And uh, I made a wager with a longtime childhood friend of mine, still friends to this day, Dave Chapel. I said, you know, the, the Leafs will never win in my lifetime, and I'm ready to make a wager. I don't know how you collect on that bet, but I'm still <laughs> winning that bet. And, uh, you know, you can't sell anybody and i mean anybody that line of garbage you tried earlier um they're sick they're tired and they are fed up and uh, they certainly don't want to hear that no um that they're just starting off they've uh, number one overall picks uh, you know the contracts and how much they've paid uh, the goaltending the additions all this stuff um jack campbell isn't to blame um you can look around and point the finger at where the blame is but um the reality is that is a massive collapse. It hurt a lot of people. And uh, we're sitting here the next day trying to dissect this. They didn't get the job done at 3-1. And I I'm certainly not going to tell you anything that anybody out here doesn't already know. That is a massive failure on a lot of levels. And um, there is no justifying it any way you slice it. That is, you know, the Montreal Canadiens, in the last month or so of the season, they looked about as disinterested as I've ever seen a team that was in, you know, a playoff contention, a playoff conversation. And somehow they turned it around. Now, a lot of people will tell you, don't call this game hockey, call it goalie. And they got a goalie. And they spent $10 million on a goaltender to beat a lot of millions of dollars worth of offense. They got the job done. I don't know how they did it. They just <laughs> chipped away and they just ruined an organization by winning in the seventh game oh, and yeah. they ruined a fan base again. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. I'm just trying to gain some sort of no. sense of floating here. You know, uh, Clark, but no, I get it. My uncle had a saying, trying leads to failure. Trying leads to failure. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, I won't Carrie Price, too, obviously right. record setting uh, for becoming the first ever player to be paid over $10 million to win a playoff series. That was the stat I heard the other day. So good for Carey Price. Obviously, that's why they pay him the big bucks. Now, Ryan, we talk about uh, franchises in turmoil. Uh, uh, we can look at where you are in Calgary, and, and we have a, a fan vote tonight where we asked which franchise in the North Division is going to see the biggest change this offseason. Uh, Calgary actually had 40% of the vote tonight for us. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the flames right now, like where are they kind of sitting? Uh, how are you feeling about the organization's kind of plan? You know, it's an interesting time for this organization and certainly for this province when you look at both teams. But as far as the Calgary flames are concerned, this is a very intriguing off season. Uh, Brad for living, uh, his, uh, entire hockey operations are going to get together, uh, starting Sunday. And they're going to get ready for uh, this draft. And now Wednesday, as we know, is the expansion draft or the expansion process. Um, but uh, getting ready for this draft is going to be wildly intriguing. I don't necessarily have the answers on why uh, or what, rather, they're going to do. Now, is it going to mean a change of 
personnel? Is it going to be a change in philosophy? Is it going to be a situation where they shuffle the deck and, and, and try and move some big names? That all sounds great. That sounds great when you're, you know, fantasy GM time. But doing it is a lot harder. And they have got to figure out what, it, what is good value for the pieces that may be in play. Are they going to get it? Uh, there has to be a market, boys. As you both know, there's got to be a, a partner willing to give you what you think is fair. Um, you know, we'll probably get into what they need to do next. But as far as I see it, it is, you know, they've got to pitch a plan to ownership. I'm, I believe they have. Um, what that looks like at this point, you know, this close to the end of the season and uh, just ahead of the draft remains to be seen. But, um, you know, there's some pieces there that they like. There's some pieces there that they'll likely, as every team does, move on from. But they got a goaltender. They've got a blue line that uh, is intriguing. They've got some key pieces that can score. Uh, they've got some grit in a guy like Matthew Kachuk who needs to desperately find his game again. But they've got a coach who... They need to sort of mesh and meld with all of these things together. So are you building around a coach? Are you building around your organization philosophy? What are you doing right now? I think we're going to find out soon. But to this point, I'm telling you, nobody knows except the guys within those walls at the saddle dome. Yeah, and you said it you said it exactly. The rest is speculation. Oh, well, exactly. And you said it, you know, not many summers is there an expansion draft which just throws another wrench into everybody's plans. Uh, so we're going to have to see how that affects Calgary and every team across the, uh, the entire league, but uh, Max you wanted to get into current NHL playoff topics. 100%. Yeah, going from the off season back to the post season there, Ryan, and you alluded to it earlier, right? The game is sometimes not called hockey, it's called goalie. So with the Habs and the Jets on tap now is really how this series going to unfold as simple as that Hellebuck versus price, or is there some more intriguing storylines beyond just the four by six goalkeepers in this one? Well, I think there's a lot of intriguing storylines, but I wouldn't be surprised guys. If we were talking after the season about which goaltender stole the show, we are seeing uh, what we all know, Carey price to be Connor Hellebuck though, as we all know is the reigning nor or rather um, Vezina trophy winner. So, I, I had Winnipeg winning the series over Edmonton. Uh, I believe that they are a really deep team. Uh, Montreal, to me, has already won their Stanley Cup. Now, I'm not saying they think that. I'm saying it sort of feels like that from the outside looking in. This was a massive hill that they just climbed. Whether or not we've seen this from teams before, you know, depending on what it is, uh, uh, it doesn't matter if it's college basketball and it's Gonzaga beating UCLA at the buzzer and then they go and lay a egg against um uh, you know in in the championship final against um oh, i want to say butler uh anyhow um i just don't know where it is like i really believe that uh that you're seeing a team that's already won their championship uh, and i could be wrong and i'm happy to be wrong i just don't know how you rise up after this kind of history uh, this kind of down 3-1 stuff, and I just think Winnipeg's a really good team. So I, I think that the Canadians are once again in tough. I don't want to predict um, that. Oops. Apologies. Have you got me, boys? We're good. Had a phone call there. Okay, yeah, I would say this. I think the Montreal Canadiens are once again in tough. I think the Winnipeg team, Winnipeg Jets are deeper. I think they've got a wonderful goaltender. They've got strength down the middle. I think that they've got intangibles. They're well coached. I think Montreal has a really good uh, sense of momentum, um, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. I wonder if that's the hill that they went and just threw everything out on, and kudos to them. I'm happy to be wrong. I am happy to say that if Carey Price plays all world like we've seen and like we know he's capable of, this team can run with anybody. This is a weird time, a weird division, a weird year. Let's see where this thing rolls. I'm not much for predictions. I just think Winnipeg is a, an underrated team that I thought throughout most of the season was arguably uh, the best team in the North Division. We'll see if Montreal can do it again. We'll see if the slipper still fits. Um, and I know Canadians fans are hoping the same. 
It's a it's a true battle of some Cinderella stories. Either one winning is a good story for for Canadian hockey, sure. I think. Uh, now let's skip down to uh, the West Division where we saw Colorado. Their juggernaut status came out last night where they beat they beat Vegas 7-1. Robin Lehner takes the net. We've seen the emergence of Nathan McKinnon as the true star of that team, and, and other guys are stepping up in big ways. Uh, do you think Vegas can bounce back from that type of defeat in the first game, or is this one slowly becoming a quick quick finish? I don't know if it's a quick finish. I mean, first of all, I'm going to say I really like Colorado. I don't think I'm the only one uh, who does. And I, for my money, if you give me the first pick overall, I know I'm taking I'm taking Nathan McKinnon. I know that will not uh, go over well in certain circles, um, <laughs> but I just I love the intangibles, the leadership, the hates to lose. I mean, everybody, as I've said um, in the past, I think everybody loves to win. That's easy, but do you hate to lose enough to, to do something about it? And I love that kid. I just think he's got everything that I would want. You know, he's, he can be an SOB. He can, he can be an MVP. I just think he is unbelievable in every aspect of the game, speed, strength, just got some bite to his game. Uh, I really like what I'm seeing, but it's not just a one trick pony in Colorado. I think they're poised to win for a long time or at least be in the conversation for a long time. So um, when you look at Kale McCarr, yeah, we can go up and down the roster. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I think everybody here tuned in knows how good they are. I don't need to sell you on the Colorado Avalanche. The question was, can Vegas jump back in? Yeah, they can. That's a good team over there as well. And, uh, you know, I'm the goaltender decision was a bit of a surprise given how Fleury had been playing. Uh, we'll see uh, how the whole thing unfolds. I really believe Vegas can jump in and make this a series, but I'm a big Colorado Avalanche uh, backer. I think I think that they're your Stanley Cup champions. I like it. I like it. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how it unfolds wire to wire here, Ryan. I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to a, a long, healthy series once uh, Vegas decides to throw Fleury back in full time, but we'll see how she goes. Moving gears over into the Central Division, it's kind of been described as a powers division all year, right? You've got Florida, uh, Carolina, and Tampa essentially exceeding Nashville by 20 points in the standings. And now we've got two of those powers left in this year's division champ and last year's Stanley Cup champ. And is it crazy to say that the favorite for the Cup could emerge from this division? I know we just touched on Colorado, but I'm, like I said, being a keen watcher of the Central this year, I'm, I'm curious your thoughts on that. Uh, that's a really tough one. I, I don't believe it, but I think it's a valid question. And, uh, you know, I remember talking to John Cooper just before the playoffs started and he, uh, he sort of said, you know, Florida's had our number and, but he said, you know, we're a more mature team. We're getting guys back. I sort of feel like we're going to get everybody back. He didn't know if it would be a hundred percent, 75. He didn't know. But they're Stanley Cup champions for a reason, and they are more mature, he said, and they know how to win. Now, they had some key losses, but there is something going on that everybody knows in Carolina that is really special. I don't know if it's special enough. I think it's a feel-good story. I think it's a, hey, don't ever count these guys out. These guys came to play. Rod Brindamore has got guys believing and playing out of their skates. So I think it's all due respect, all due respect but I'm not sure there's enough horses in the stable there. Um, they may advance past Tampa, but as I think your question was, are, are, is there you know, a Stanley Cup pedigree between those two teams? Uh, I'm not sure it's there yet, but this year, anyhow. There certainly is in Tampa. You, know, you never count the champs out until they're done. I'm not sure Carolina's ready to take that step, although it might not surprise me that they win this round and roll on, but I don't think anybody's better than what we see in Denver. Any any time you can add a Nikita Kucherov just out of the blue, it's never going to hurt your just roster. Just minutes before puck oh, drop, know, right? Yeah. Yeah. He just made his way down to the rink and figured he'd play. Yeah, uh, <laughs> game time decision. <laughs> Finally, let's look at the East. Now, this one, the East in general, typically was looked at as the deepest division. They had a lot of the teams that a lot of people considered to be kind of front runners in general. We got Trots versus Cassidy. Uh, we got Islanders versus Boston. This is going to be a throw them down type of series. Uh, where are you thinking that this one's going to end up? Because so far, 1-1, one, one, close battles, overtime. What yeah. do you think? This is a hard one. I don't know about for you guys, but like if I was wagering on a series, I, I would stay away from this one myself. I don't want to – maybe other people have this thing handicapped a different way. I I don't really know. Um, I think this is a group uh, – or rather a series that um, 
It gives you a little bit of everything. Every, interesting, you know, Milan Lucic said um, uh, just prior – or it was during the exit interviews actually with the media, he just talked about the standard that was set in Boston from when he was just a kid to how it still stands now. And I thought that was fascinating because it was so spot on that um, the standard in Boston is excellent and it's really hard to beat. And New York is still striving for that, but I'm a big believer in their coach. Um, they're one of those teams that sort of shows you that it's about it, I don't want to call them like the New Jersey Devils, probably when you guys were just in grade <laughs> school, but there was, uh, or maybe even not around. I don't know. I'm dating myself a little I'm bit. 30. 2003, the I'm Devils 30. provided a very painful memory for me, Ryan. So, uh, yeah, I know the, the Devils teams back in the day. I remember them not so fondly. Yeah. A couple of Ducks fans here. I'm oh. a, Obviously, yeah, they were my first team, but Max was a Ducks fan for a while, too. So, oh, so anyway, sorry. Ducks. Continue, Ryan. How do you, how do, how, wait a minute. How did a couple it's the of movies in Saskatchewan? Paul Korea. It's the movies. <laughs> Paul Korea. You know, I grew up, I'm a 91 born kid here, uh, Ryan. Oh. So the movies came out right after <laughs> I was born. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> It is what it is. Ryan's wondering, oh, geez, what did I sign up for? On a the Tuesday Hollywood night with these allure. Kids now? The Hollywood allure got, got to me. <laughs> Look hey, at I, the time. All right. Anyhow, yeah. good to be with you guys. All the best. Enjoy the hoodie. <laughs> Thank you. Good Lord, guys. Let's come up with a better backstory than that. That's embarrassing, too. What's oh. going on here? I don't know. We're, we're just the making fools of Because of the movies? Yeah. Tim McAuliffe was calling highlights one night, Ryan Leslie, on the score back in the day. And you know what? It was something about he was breaking down a play that Korea had made and those beautiful white jerseys uh, came on screen and I was hooked from there. That's that's my backstory. There you go. That's a better one than me. Tim McAuliffe on the score. That's that's where yeah. I go back. Yeah. That's hard to argue with Timmy. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, yeah, that's a series that's uh, challenging to call. I'm going to go with Boston, but... Um, Kind of neat because I think the Islanders, uh, I think they're the darlings, you know, in, in recent years. They're that team that maybe we don't watch all the time, but we keep an eye on them. And they do things that kind of surprise some people. And they kind of, they tease you a little bit. They please you a little bit. Uh, they think, they make you think that they're close. And maybe, you, you know, wanna, you want to be an insider and you're going to call the Islanders. Um, but again, I'm not sure they're there yet either. And I just think Boston's got some intangibles and, and, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm not one for the prediction game, so I apologize if I'm skirting it. But no, I love fine. watching the series. I just think that what's fascinating about it is we don't know. And if you do, you're lying because this is a this is a series that gives you a little bit of everything without really knowing what we know. Hey, we could go back and forth talk about the Habs and Leafs. We all know that. Maybe we would talk about Winnipeg and Edmonton. We are digging in, and we're probably watching Tampa a little bit. We watched Tampa and Florida. We loved it. But this is one that maybe doesn't. You know, it's nice outside. Maybe I'll hit the backyard. I'll skip the uh, Islanders and the bro. <laughs> but you come back and you're, I'm sorry, I missed that. That's uh, kind of where we're at for me, anyhow. Absolutely. 100%. And you know what, Ryan? we got a fun one to wrap up with you here. Wood jerseys. Can you tell us about that story a little bit about how your involvement came to be with it? Um, oh. Just our viewers and our listeners a little bit. I mean, with all the Leafs fans burning their actual jerseys <laughs> right now, might be a little dangerous to put some wood jerseys in the hands of those guys. But at the end of the day, like I said, I just like to know uh, your your involvement with wood jerseys in a really cool endeavor. Seen the pics on social media. They, they do look, look really great. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, they're gorgeous. Um, a good friend of mine, Ryan Moyer who uh, is our one of the statisticians with sports and he and his dad, Dave, and I know that they've got a whole host of people uh, behind them, but Dave and Ryan do the stats for uh, Sportsnet hockey night um, in the playoffs, all regular season. Dave's done, I don't know how many millions of games they did every game in the, in the bubble. They're just hockey nuts. All of them. Dave's been around Bob Cole for, I'm going to oh. just say 30 years in the booth. Uh, his son, Ryan and his buddies, um, they've got this project going with these wood jerseys and they have created this, what I think is a beautiful piece of memorabilia that, um, you know, you can hang on the wall. It is an actual Jersey, beautifully, uh, crafted, um, that is made of wood, the finest sort of detail you could ever imagine. I just got on board because I, I really think that, uh, uh, Ryan's onto something here. And I, when I stay involved, I'm just putting out a couple of posts, but it's their project. And I think it's awesome. And I think sports fans or hockey fans, and I think it's probably going to lend itself to other areas. And I hope it does. Um, so, yeah, if you want to, if you're a sports nut, and chances are your audience is given uh, this format, take a look at the wood jerseys uh, on, um, on Instagram. 
and they show you the detail. And I think they do a great job on social media. I've had one. We've done a couple of giveaways. Did one where I had Matthew Kachuk sign one, and and uh, I just think uh, it's a neat new look. You know, you, ha- you know, jerseys. You never know what to do with them. It sort of seems like maybe put them behind glass or you end up on the hang or whatever. This is a neat piece of. Uh, a uh, sports memorabilia that just hangs on the wall and looks good. It's a conversation starter, so uh, I wish those guys all the best, and uh, it's great you brought it up because I think it's uh, a wonderful little initiative. Fantastic. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a great it's a great look. I was looking into them uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, you might have to wait a couple weeks before you order your lease. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too yeah. soon. Yeah. Too, too soon <laughs> for some. <laughs> but yeah, you said the no, details great. get on great. it. Get on yes, it. Wood absolutely. jersey. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. you said the details great. I love how they have all the little dots for the shoulders mm-hmm. and and the little un- the armpit little line Can't stuff say going on. About and them. They look the trim. fantastic. Oh, so great. Anyways, uh, Ryan, we'll let you go. Thank you for hanging out yes. with us tonight. Really appreciate it. As always, love, love the time. Always. And uh, we'll maybe do this again down the road. Thank you kindly, Ryan. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Good luck with everything tonight and uh, the rest of the way. Thanks. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Ryan. Uh, our guests, as always, over video chat are brought to you by our friends at IKS Media. IKS Media is your premier destination for uh, event planning, live broadcasting, uh, live events, and so much more. Screen rentals, uh, WHL hub cities, maybe basketball in the future. You name it, they got Who it. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but lots of good stuff going on. Check out IKSmedia.com. CA. Oh, come on, man. Dot CA. Dot CA. IKSmedia.ca. I'm going with Jordan, it. Jordan, we're going to have to edit that. I'm possibly. diving in. IKSmedia.ca. Check them out. Uh, they're great people. We're obviously in the studio tonight, so we thank them each yes, and every sir. night. Uh, we're going to head to a break. We got a big announcement coming up. Now, we already have, Max, uh, some people t- chiming in. Uh, they're watching the show, and they said, so when's Andrew Gottslieg coming on? Uh, they don't care what we're talking no, about. No, they don't. Nope. They are here to see Andrew we're Gottslieg secondary. and Habib. Uh, our numbers just skyrocketed, so they must have posted something because they are influencers, Max. That's right. Uh, so we're gonna get off of. We're gonna get you off of here. Yeah, I'm out. And get them in here yeah. after the break. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. IKS Live, the proud producer of The Rod Peterson Show and The Recovery Hour. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com.
right, we are back, and the stars of the show are here tonight. These are the stars. We've got some big stuff coming up here in just a few minutes. So I see that we have a ton of people checking in on our Facebook page specifically uh, and around our platforms who are here to hear what you guys have to say in just a few minutes. But we're going to tease it because first... We want to get to talk a little basketball with you guys. So first off, how are you guys doing? Uh, you're sharing a mic tonight, so I'm gonna we're gonna do our 100%. best. But yeah, I'm no, good. How are you guys I'm doing? good. Oh, I'm doing I'm doing good too, man. Thanks for having us. Oh, absolutely. Always love having you guys. You know that. Uh, Max is over here snapping pictures, uh, being a photographer and stuff. So good job, Max. Um, we're going to get into some NBA topics. Now, obviously, we're into the playoffs, so it's the exciting time of year. Everyone's everyone's got their par their uh, telescopes on with everything that's going on right now. Uh, so, Alan, if you're back there and you can bring up the corner three, let's bring it up in the TV graphic if you don't mind. Uh, Jordan might need some time to tinker around with that, and I'll let them do that. But um, we do every time you guys come on, we got the corner three. It's the three big topics that we want to talk about. And I think the first one, there we go, rainbows, fairy tales, and the nets. So this is Andrew. Andrew's reaching for the mic. Give me the damn mic. <laughs> yeah, so Andrew, hit me off. Like, the nets, I've, I've heard a lot. We had Brian, your buddy now, because we've connected you guys. Brian Snow was on yes. last week. We yeah, talked about I'm, James Harden. I'm, I'm going on Brian's show tomorrow. Oh, so good. I, so yeah, I love it. I always love having Brian on Brian because awesome. I know how to push his buttons. Yeah. And whenever you say the word James, James Harden, he just <laughs> you can just book a clip because he's going to well, go off. So tell me about the nets. I mean... So I'm gonna go counterculture because I, I'm, I'm watching all of all of my shows. We're watching all of our all of our all of our NBA shows, all of our content, and I mean, everyone's pretty high on the Nets. I don't buy it. Yeah. I don't buy this at all. For a second, I don't buy it. Are they the greatest skilled team? Hundred percent. Is KD, James Harden, Kyrie? Are they are they the most skilled scoring team? Hundred percent. There's no way they're gonna win. Yeah. See, you I and Brian, them, are that's why you guys work so well together, because Brian thinks the same oh, thing. Oh, man. I want, I, I want them to lose against the Bucs. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen, though. Uh, I think they're going to they're gonna go and meet our Lakers in the final, meet the purple and gold, you know oh, what I yeah. mean? But, uh, but this is, this is, this is, this is let's, let's kick it off with an analogy, because we always like to dive into the analogy. So here's the reason why the Nets don't work. I am, I, there's two areas of the NBA that, I, that I'm going to be very... Uh, negative with the Clippers and the Nets. Everything else, I'm like positive, optimistic Andy over here. But what I'm going to say is this. Uh, the Nets, in my opinion, have one problem. One core problem that they, and they are never going to win. Okay, I'm going to go on this riff for a minute. You're, you take the mic Habib, after this. You might this, as well okay? just take <laughs> off. Take, we'll see you in a few minutes. You might minutes. as well go after this. I'm going <laughs> to give you the mic after, but you got to let me go on about this. They got one problem. And this is a problem that many other men have had as well. Oh, wow. An ex, uh, uh, I feel like I don't a, like where this is going. A chaotic, <laughs> psycho oh. ex-girlfriend. Oh, I see. And that is what... I was this, thinking you were going a different direction what, with that. And that is what Kyrie Irving is. He right. is the cancer of the team. I don't care how else you put it. This guy is insane. He's nuts. He's not focused. He's, he's, on, he's on some different cloud trying to make an issue out of everything. He... he this man, two years ago, threw a basketball in the stands at, at some fans, and some guy, some 21-year-old fan, throws a water ball at him, and now he's pressing charges for assault of a deadly weapon, right. and then he's trying to twist it and well, make it. Well, you guys know you can't bring a water bottle on an airplane. It pretty much is a deadly weapon and at this point. So anyway, so, so here's what I think. Here's what I think. I think Kyrie's nuts. I think he is the psychotic ex-girlfriend that he comes and goes and it's like, oh, you're married now. You've been married five, six years. Hey, sweetie, we don't got to worry about that girl. She's out of our hair. Uh-uh. Nope. You show up at the beach. You got your two kids there and here comes the girl, pink eyebrows and all, coming in. Hi, the kids. Get in the damn minivan. That's Kyrie. All okay. right. So that's, that's Kyrie. So I don't believe, I don't believe the Nets hype for a second. I don't think they're going to win. I think that Kyrie's too focused on becoming a victim and, 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 oh, he, I feel so bad for him. He crawls in his Maserati in his $20 million penthouse and, oh, I feel bad for him. So, so Andrew, tell me anyways. how you really feel about the Nets though. Like, <laughs> can I lay on the couch? <laughs> yeah. Can I talk yeah. about it? So yeah. <laughs> what anyways. do your dreams mean, Andrew? <laughs> I love the NBA. Yeah. So let's, so anyways, I'm going to pass the mic off. Yeah. What do you Let's think get about, more positive. What do you think about the Nets? Or are we going into this next topic? Because I saw the Clippers on there, and I know you want to talk about the Clippers. I, honestly, I just want to point out the pink eyebrow thing. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, was, that was good, right? That was pretty good. I'll give you that. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want to go into that a little bit, or do you want to uh, get into honestly, the next like, topic? Honestly, okay, I, I have to agree with them, but you can't deny that Kevin, Kevin Durant is, like, unreal. He's too tall. He's averaging 33 points 
in this yeah. playoff. So, like, it's going to be tough for teams to really beat them throughout the playoffs. Like, for Boston to steal that one game, Jason Tatum had to score 50 points. Right. So, uh, it's, it's going to be tough for other teams to beat them. But I'm sorry, bro. Like <laughs> outside, outside of your man crush, LeBron, uh, both of you guys, uh, <laughs> who can match up against Kevin Durant defensively? Is there maybe Giannis? Like who who else is there really who can do it? Especially let's say in the East. I don't. I don't, I don't think the Nets are going to lose the East. Okay. <laughs> I want them to, but I don't think they're going to lose the that's East. That's fair. That's fair. I don't think so. I, uh, I don't think so. No, that's fair. Alan, can you bring up the corner three? We're going to get into topic number two now because I think we're getting into the Clippers. They are proving to be the peasants of Los Angeles now. Basement. I've, basement boomers. Oh, I've already seen uh, trade Kawhi back to Toronto, where Kawhi's a free agent. He'll go back to Toronto. I've seen. All sorts of Kawhi stuff. So tell me, Habib, about the Clippers. What's going on there? So one thing that really stood out to me was Luka. Yes. And how unreal he is. The only problem is is he's the only one left. Like, the the Mavs are doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting the Clippers to just blow them out. Uh, And (laughs) Kawhi is actually playing unreal. Like, he's playing so good. He's averaging, like, no, 33 points, and he's just a complete lockdown. Um, The only problem is they're the shittiest team in L.A., so it doesn't really matter what's going to happen, man. So (laughs) I got one for you. I got one for you. Okay. The Clippers, what they are is they're that guy in the meeting. So you hit the meeting. Who has a crazy ex-girlfriend. No, no, no. no, no, Oh, sorry, sorry. That is dedicated for my guy. I used to be a... I was talking about five years ago naming my son Kyrie. I loved Kyrie. I just can't stand his attitude now. He's crazy. He's nuts. No, something You disagree with me. I mean, you you lying yourself. Anyways, enough about Kyrie. Yeah. This is what the Clippers are. The Clippers are that guy in the meeting. When you hit Tuesday morning or Wednesday morning, about 10, 30 a.m., you hit the the boardroom and, and you know, you know, whoever it is, Gord was supposed to do this task, and he didn't. And he didn't do it. Everyone knows he was supposed to do it, but then Gordson, uh, I, 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 I didn't. I wasn't supposed to do that. I didn't do that. That's that's the Clippers. You, you can only blame. They blame Ty Lue. They blame Paul Paul George. They blame Kawhi. They blame their bench. They blame this. They blame that. The show's over. Yeah. Gord, do your work. Gord, Gord. <laughs> 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 Habib, are you Gord? Like, <laughs> who's Gord in this scenario at Hoop Life? <laughs> I feel yeah, like I there's some scars here at Hoop Life. No, we're good. We're good. <laughs> yeah. Yo, do you still have my water? <laughs> hey, you still got your water bottle. Uh, let's bring. You got any more to say about the Clippers? Um, no, honestly, if uh, Luca, if Luca can hit some free throws, I think they're gonna win this. And yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to see them pass. I don't want to see the Clippers pass this first round. Yeah. I, I hate them, man. That's good. <laughs> well, Kawhi off. back to Toronto. Let's do it. Um, let's bring out the corner three one more time. We got Goat James. Now, are you guys going to sit here and tell me that you guys like LeBron James? I have never heard you guys say that. So <laughs> explain to me what's going on with LeBron James. Okay. So my take on this, he's carrying everybody on his shoulders. Mm-hmm. And historically, LeBron James, in the first round, he doesn't score. Now, he's averaging like 21 points. Like he should be scoring like, I don't know. Like more than that. More than that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so one thing that really stood out to me was just how much he's passing and how much he's getting his teams involved because if they can start that chemistry right now, he always relies on them at the end to kind of go off, right? So I'm, I'm actually kind of excited, but I don't know if you guys uh, seen Russell Westbrook play these last – I think last night or the night before. I was watching the Leafs collapse <laughs> in Game 7, so I wasn't watching Sorry it. about that. No, it's Matt. okay. <laughs> it I, I've accepted it, and I'm but, moving on. So with Anthony Davis being hurt, that's a huge loss. LeBron has to step up and start scoring because Andre Drummond is averaging eight rebounds. And the reason why I brought up Russell Westbrook was he had 21 rebounds. This guy's like 6'1". He's not 6'3". Yeah. He's not 6'3". I don't care what anyone says. Okay, I'm going to look it up. Go keep talking. <laughs> but, so think about this. If <laughs> And the other thing was he's, he's, he was 3 for 19, still scored 20 points. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so what the hell is going on? The guy's a magician. Yeah, he's a wizard, you might even, say. Even when he's playing. <laughs> hey, you can see what I did there because he's on the Wizards. <laughs> <laughs> it says he's 6'3. I don't know. It's cap, bro. It's, it's cap. It's cap. It's cap. <laughs> but all I know is uh, he's, even when he's playing crappy, he's still contributing. And a guy like Andre Drummond, that's almost seven feet tall, yeah. averaging eight rebounds, that's a disgrace. So. I feel bad for LeBron because he's he's just going, like I said, historically he just wants to get everybody involved so they can actually kill it in playoffs. But, like, he has to just start scoring. 
don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Eight rebounds. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Listen, my guy, LBJ, his shoulders are made for this. So let's get positive now. All right. We talk, we talk, we talk enough shit. <laughs> These guys are so much better than, than, than us. Eh? <laughs> how you do guys we are talk? doing great. <laughs> how, do we, how do we talk? Hey, eh? no, no, no. You guys it, are doing great. It, it's fun, man. Um, no, here's the deal. LeBron's shoulders are literally made for this. Yeah. So what's going to happen tonight in about 10 minutes is tip off. And LeBron is going to go 2018 LeBron. And he's going to put the squad on his back and we're going to close it out in six. Not going to go to seven. Okay. I had, I had a friend today say, hot take, it's going to go to seven. I'm like, come on, man. It's not going to seven. So anyways, that's, um, that's what I think. I that's think good. that uh, I think LeBron is, is going to carry him. And I ultimately, like, our, we need AD to win. I don't think we're going to win without AD because it's going to be real tough. Whether the Bucks, the Sixers, the Nets, whoever comes out of the East, we're not going to, we're not going to win without AD, but... Uh, Dennis Schroeder, yeah. <laughs> I love him, though, man. He's great. Uh, yeah, he's great. But okay. that's what I'd say. Here's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to give you guys a second, and I'm just going to read some comments. But after the comments is going to be your announcement. So start prepping. Love it. Love it. Now, the first comment I got is from Austin Philipchuk. He says they're going to have to carry hard without AD. So I'm thinking that he's talking about LeBron. Uh, Jeff Glaspell. Do you know Jeff? 100%. He says, is that why he's always falling over? Wink face, laughing emoji. I'm not sure who he's talking about. He might be talking about himself on the floor. Maybe I don't know. he's talking about himself. Uh, Carson Fontaine says, 2018 LeBron is incoming. Uh, Myron, Fox. my buddy Myron from TikTok says, the Clippers are the Leafs of the NHL. Thanks, Myron. Uh, lots of high price talent. The team on paper looks great. And they have a deep squad, but they perennially underachieve in the playoffs. It's like Myron, he's uh he's just he, dead on. Myron's man. my buddy. He's a Leafs fan too. So dead on. if anyone's gonna call anybody a Leafs uh, comparison, Myron has a great point of reference. Um, Aaron's checking in. Your wife, right? Aaron Gottsley is your my wife. My wife. Uh, yes. Sam Lickman says pink eyebrows. <laughs> Uh, also, Flat Earth Kyrie. Thanks for. <laughs> uh, Austin Philip Chuck is <laughs> he's saying nuts, right? pandemic P. Who's pandemic P? Porzingis. 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 Well, Porzingis is out here. I, so, so Przingis is out here playing like Channing Fry. That's the comparison. Oh yeah, that's a comparison. Good. I feel friend. like that's a bad comparison. Good. good. Or is well, Channing Fry? Cha it, well, Channing Fry's retired, but Channing Fry just shot threes. Right. Okay. And that's what Przingis turned into. So Got it. shout out, shout out, Levi Williams for that for that comparison. Brock Crush Lucky. Brock Crush Lucky. Crush Lucky. Crush Lucky. Crush good friend lucky. of mine. That's a great yeah. name, actually. Crush Lucky. Totally. Um, totally. He says the Kyrie analogy is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I, every time the crying emoji comes up, I just... That's Brock, I appreciate, appreciate, appreciate uh, the hair, man. So you have some viewers is what I'm getting at. And just in time, uh, because we're going to get into your announcement now. So uh, I'm going to preface this, and I'm going to hand it off and let you guys do the talking. Uh, we do have some pictures as well. You have the pictures ready. Awesome. Alan, get those pictures ready and, and ready awesome. to roll. Hoop Life Basketball has been... Basically teasing me and Max for months about this announcement that we can't say anything about. So we've been sitting here, uh, you know, every couple of weeks. Can we make the announcement yet? Nope. Uh, next time we're on. Okay. Next time you're on. Can we make the announcement? Nope. Next time you're on. Okay. So this time it's actually happening. You guys have been it's prepping happening. it and hyping it up and it's amazing. We're really looking forward to it. So can you take over for the next couple of minutes? What is your big announcement? What is going on? So before we show the images, fellas, uh, I'll, I'll say this. So. Habib and I, we, we started Hoop Life for one, along, with, along with, our, with our crew, with Key and Austin and my wife. And our goal is this. We want to create successful people. That was it. That was it. That was the punchline. So, right. I mean, growing up, I always talk about like, my upbringing. And like, as, as a kid, being a little insecure, basketball was like, one of the greatest tools that taught me how to be secure. And so that's the reason why we started it. And so um, for years, we've, we've, we've grown Hoop Life, started it from nothing, started from a tiny little camp running a week in summer. And we learned the ropes and we dove in and, and, and we had this vision of, of creating this, this global brand. So it started with our Hoop Life app, which now has like thousands and thousands of users with, with hundreds of new subscriptions every month. And that started, that started. And when we looked at what we were doing and we looked at, at the, the, what COVID did to shutting down all the gyms, we said, we need a place for our Regina kids to be all the time. We need not just a decent place. We need a state-of-the-art place. The place. The place. The hoop life place for our kids to be all the, all the time. So I want to throw it over to my main man here to do the honors. El Presidente. Oh, um, no, just to like really touch up on that, 
Um, I think like one of the biggest thing was like Andrew and I and everyone on our team we're we're low key disappointed with the city and and how many few facilities are for kids to just go play basketball right and they're building schools left and right year after year and the, the beautiful schools but that sit empty so we were like these kids want to play these kids want to play and it got to a point where it's just we need something for them yeah. and so we kind of put our heads together like you mentioned aaron keegan austin andrew knight and we're just so excited to announce man we opening our own hoop life facility this fall. Yay. So, Who play facility. So there we go. So, so there's a artist rendering. Uh, that's not it. But it's going to be. Uh, so now can you tell us uh, a little bit about the building itself, maybe where it is, how big, what you guys are hoping to get in there. Yeah. yeah t- what's going on with the building itself? Yeah, 100%. It looks great. Let's, can we flip through some more pictures too? Yeah. The, Alan, just click through as we go. Deadly. So yeah. So I mean, it's, it's going to be on Solomon Crescent for everyone who wants to go check it out. Um, it's going to be, we're going to be opening this September, like early September. Uh, and, uh, it's not to mention though, if anyone's tuned out, summer camp is on this summer, right? We're going to be at the same gym we've been the last however many years. So summer is still on this center though. Uh, we've been, we've been at hard at work. Like we had a long meeting today going over plans. And so, uh, early September, this is going to open. And this is, I'm, I'm, I, I don't understate it when I say this is state of the art. Yes. This is this is an incredible facility. Hardwood floors, full court, full uh, full, full court, uh, state of the art workout facility. Uh, there's going to be a, an incredible lobby for parents to be able to to relax and chill, and huge bleachers, and and uh, this is this is going to be the real step for us to take. And so you can see the beautiful lobby here, and this is the next step for us in our squad. Like Habib, I, Austin Keegan, my wife, like we've been grinding through this COVID season to keep it going. And we genuinely just love our, we love our hoop life family and our hoop yeah. life kids. And we literally would do anything to make this possible. And so, uh, so we're like, we're beyond excited this fall. We're going to announce, we're going to be running an, an elite club league for kids for, Ooh. for grades three to eight. And, uh, we have another program that's going to be for elite high school kids to be able to get in. So we really are covering the basis from the youngest of young kids to all the way up. And uh, another great part too, like for younger parents, I have a two and a half year old son. He can't shoot. Well, right now, I mean, he can't shoot much higher than, than however many feet, but, uh, but these hoops are all in the gym. When we have younger kids in there, these hoops can be lowered down. A seven, eight year old kid shouldn't be shooting on a 10 foot hoop. So we've thought through everything in this facility and we're, we're unbelievably excited to make it happen. So we got a hardcore summer of, yeah. of re- this, this building is we're, I mean, we're taking over the building um, for uh, it's, it's a shell and we're putting everything in. And so we've had some incredible partners come in and, and, and help us and advise us along the way. But this is state of the art. Uh, this is, yeah, this is something that w- the city needs. You know, uh, when you mentioned the, the, there's a lack of facilities. I mean, we look at, there's a hundred schools in the city. You can't get in any of those schools. They sit, they sit empty. And so, I mean, granted the, the, this, the, you know, whose fault that is, we're not even going to get into it because we made a solution for it. And, uh, and we're thankful too. like the, the city councilors have actually been incredibly supportive. So shout out, shout out, shout out to them. Uh, they've, they've been incredibly supportive and, and wanted to see this happen. So we're just pumped to bring optimism, bring positivity to the city. And, uh, this is going to be like, we're not opening this to rent it. We're opening this to have basketball. To, right. D- we, it's a basketball facility. Yeah. We're not using this for, for other things. We're using this for kids. And our biggest priority is that we just give our hoop life clients and family the most incredible experience that that they could ask for so we're passionate man we're ready but i can't tell i'll pass this to you <laughs> <laughs> no um no i think like andrew really covered majority of it and we're super so excited we want this to be your one-stop shop for basketball in regina whether it's club games training working out like everything involved in basketball and we're excited i know a lot of kids are just itching to get back in the gym but most importantly they they just they just want to be somewhere where they can hang out and showcase their skills i don't know every time i come on here i tell you how many talented kids are in yeah. saskatchewan and this is just going to help them get to the next level and honestly none of this would have happened if we didn't put everything on the line and just god had our back in every step of the way and so we're just so grateful for the lord to just 
keep us on just going and just give us the energy to kind of do this. So I'm, I'm excited to hopefully you guys can come out. And well, that's what day. I was going to say. <laughs> opening day. <laughs> yeah, let's get in there. Max, Max and Clark, you, yeah. you both are going to be there opening day. That's perfect. 100%. Our comments are going nuts right now you guys we got aaron gotzlig's getting the all sorts of emojis we got kirsten saying we're so excited for the new space uh chad isaac is saying is there a possibility of the rattlers playing an exhibition game there not sure how big it is or how many it holds Brad now Raul, i know you guys are buddies might, with those we, guys well, the, in the center i mean we're the hoop life's the is we're the rattlers Official youth development partner. I was just texting. Shout out Raul. Well, shout out Brad. Yeah, my buddy Raul. Uh, yeah, I can pull we, some strings. We always, we always, <laughs> we always give a shout out Raul. Shout out Brad. That's that's yeah. the uh, that's the back office, but or the yeah. front office. Or but um, the uh, no, the, I mean Brad and Raul are incredible. The the front office of the Rattlers. And so if there was ever a possibility to do an exhibition game. That All right, we're starting up the campaign. Start the GoFundMe. Let's, Let's start. Yeah, we'll start the petition. <laughs> Let's uh, get it. Jackson Seal, my nephew, saying big time. Uh, Brock is saying I've been saying about this about Regina for a long time. People needed a place other than mainstream gyms to go and play. Now they 100%. have one. Big W. Myron, he's checking in from outside of the province. He's saying I love this. The game of basketball needs to grow in Canada, and a grassroots program such as this is a big step in the right direction. Whitney's giving emojis. Austin Phillipchuk's giving emojis. Levi Williams looks insane. Rhonda, I'm just reading all these comments. This is amazing. Sam Lichtman is saying amazing, 100% world class. What? Appreciate wow, you, says Brock. Your boy Brock is blowing up the comments. <laughs> uh, Barb Gottslig says, yay, yay, congrats. Thanks, mom. Love you. There you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Carson Fontaine, big W. Uh, so lots of uh, Betty Tamlin saying, way, way to go. Uh, Rob Gottslig is saying, great job, Team Hoop Life. Did you just tell your whole family to check in today? I appreciate you, family. It. Man, y'all have my back. <laughs> Habib's family's on, I know. So now we, we Jade Belmer saying, let's go. All. Anyways, you guys have a ton of support. This is a great uh, initiative. Now, can I tie this into something that I, I was talking to our buddy Tanner Brightman? Please, uh, yeah. Now, is this going to tie into what he's got going on? Because there's a little bit more going on around the province <laughs> totally, as well. Man. Can you talk? No. Is that a thing you can talk about? I think uh, like, he made the like, announcement. Bit, like, t uh, t the, the league, I mean. That's oh, what I mean. I, I don't. I can't speak on the league. Okay. That's that's totally Tanner. I well, will, hang on I, for next. Time. I will say though, like t Tanner, Tanner's our guy. We yeah. uh, Tanner's been incredibly helpful with this process too, because I mean he's just undertaken. He's he's on his second now, and so no, like huge shout out to Tanner Brightman. He's uh, he's our guy. And, like we uh, like incredible incredible friendship with him and so uh tanner's gonna do some big stuff with our game and he's got yeah. a huge passion for it just it just today he texted me and he's just like like let's grow the sport that's what he said and so he's got a huge passion for it and it inspires us too so no we yeah, appreciate him. He's so got, he he's got some huge stuff. With he was league. on the Rod Peterson show. Our, I saw our that. Yeah, buddies yeah. upstairs yeah, um, yeah. and me, I guess. But uh, he he announced that they are going to start the Canadian Junior Basketball League. So this is. Uh, just, I don't know how much you guys can speak on this exactly, but basically comparable to SJHL hockey, uh, Canadian Junior Football League, like the Regina Thunder, the Hilltops, but basketball. And he said there was going to be a team in Regina uh, and Saskatoon. Now, can you guys speak to that at all right now? Because I know it's in the early stages. Yeah. No, like, I, honestly, shout out to Tanner because he wants to grow basketball, and yeah. it's, it's amazing. And with this new league that he's starting, especially with COVID and all these great 12s missing out a year of not playing, yeah. they don't have any game films, right? And all that's all coaches want is just game film. So for for them to start this and give a platform for these kids to, like, showcase their skills and get game films and get a scholarship, it's, it's unreal, and not, it's going to keep growing, I think. I think stuff like this and just people just putting their heads together and that's the reason why basketball grows. So I'm, I'm excited lot, for it. A lot of optimism, a lot of good things happening. Now, what kind of like capacity are you thinking this gym is going to have? If you're going to have tournaments or, or games or what are you guys thinking in terms of that? Uh, what's like that, we talking what's that like song? we talking like twenty thousand, fifty thousand. Like what do you guys? Stay big stadiums. A lot. A lot. It's going to be a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pack the house, man. Pack the house. Good. I love know. it. I love it. Um, this is so exciting. What else can you tell me? Like, What else do you have going on? You mentioned your camps, which you guys just announced about a week ago. Yeah. Uh, what's going on with all those? Just give us a, a little bit of a pump up for that, too. So all summer camps are live, and our sessions are live, too. So we're going to be going in the morning. We're going to be going in the afternoon, and we're going to be going in the evening nice. with our one-hour sessions. So we got basketball going all summer. So... All these kids that are DMing us left and right saying, we miss playing ball. We want to get back. All right, you guys have zero excuse to not pull up. Yeah, right. Like, zero yeah. excuse because we're going to be going from morning to the, like, 
Primo. I know that. I don't know if Austin's there. He's going to he be there to like midnight in the gym yeah. playing ball. So I'm telling you guys, if you guys are tuned in, okay, I'm watching you, man. Zero skews. So get your ass in the gym, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now, again, hoopplayfastball.com. All the information's probably there, I would think. 100%. And July, starting July 5th, summer camp July is 5th. live for eight straight weeks. So hoop lifers. What TV? Am I looking at this camera? Uh, that middle one, yeah. This middle one. Nope, sorry, this one over here. This I one. Lied, I lied to you. I lied to you. All right, all right. There you go. My Hoop Life, little brothers, little sisters, starting July 5th. We're going to be back in the gym for eight weeks, eight straight weeks, morning to night. So make sure everyone, we have weekly sessions and camps. After summer's finished, we're going to make a smooth transition to home base, which is the Hoop Life facility. So this summer, we'll be back at Laval like normal. Uh, we're it, it's the same place it's always been, and then we'll make that smooth transition. So, I love we're it. excited. We're excited. Promo code squad 10, 10% off camps. Squad 10. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, okay, so what else? Uh, you got camps. You get any new apparel going on? Because I know you guys have the best apparel in the game. Uh, yes. Yeah. But you got some new stuff coming in? Yeah, we, we got a bunch of stuff. I don't even want to tell it right now. It's going to be another secret. So Good. We won't hear about it until the third, three more times you guys come on. You can tease it every single time. You guys are great at, great at teasing. I'm, it's a good thing, though. It's a good thing. <laughs> okay, so, again, um, Solomon Crescent. So where in the city is that? Solomon Crescent. It's right off, like, uh, was it the SGI? Um, salvage. Yeah, the SGI Salvage. Just, it's right across oh. K Bros and... Uh, yeah, it's like nearby here, actually. It's so. close to here. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go, Max. We're close by, so we don't even. We have we have no excuse either, Max. Anyone in Regina? It's near the Get Our Air Trampoline Park. You're literally right beside us. What we're, the heck? We're right here. <laughs> this we're is right amazing. Here. I can just go yeah. there for my lunch break and shoot some hoops and uh, come back to work. Always. Okay. Always, uh, I just 100%. got really excited. Director Jordan said, I'm not even a basketball fan and I'm getting excited. So, Jordan, we're going to have to go to Hoop Life at lunchtime, uh, blow off some steam. <laughs> Alan's a basketball guy. The craziest guy. part is, like, Regina, this has never been done here. Yeah. There's never, ever been a gym dedicated just to basketball. A full court, hardwood, beautiful gym. Hoops go up and down. Love it. State of the art workout facility, lobby. Like, the, it's, 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 showers like name it what else man i was hoping TVs. you guys would have showers i was waiting for that announcement you guys would have showers this is a big day it's <laughs> this gonna is be good. great man it's Not gonna be great guys man. this is exciting news super exciting uh hooplifebasketball.com uh to check out all the information max is doing this to me off you want to jump in okay max take over my microphone for a sec super professional that's right fellas i just want to say from a small business perspective the year you guys have grinded through, I'm just on behalf of the Squadcast, thanks for sharing this announcement with us. Congratulations, the best of luck. And again, like I said, knowing what small business has gone through this year, you guys have grinded, you deserve all of this. Congratulations from all of us at the Squadcast. Oh, yo, you're a beauty, bro. We appreciate you, man. There we go. Hugs all around. We're going to have a cry in the commercial break and, and uh, embrace each other. This is great. Okay, guys, we have to take a break, but... Uh, this is exciting news for the entire province. Congratulations. Keep working hard. And we'll do this again in, in a couple weeks. Awesome. All right. Uh, we're going to take a break. We're going to talk about some Blue Jays when we come back. Maybe wrap up a few other thoughts we have about the NHL. And uh, we'll check out our poll results for the night because I, I still want to talk about that a little bit more too. But we'll see you in a couple minutes. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Everyday Hoop Life.
Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. IKS Live, the proud producer of The Rod Peterson Show and The Recon. Recovery Hour. Visit us at IKSLive.ca. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Okay, is everybody coming down from that amazing announcement? That was unbelievable. That was Again, incredible. another shout out to yeah. everybody at Hoop Life Basketball. Massive. Uh, big facility coming, major moves in the basketball uh, community in Saskatchewan. Super exciting. And then As what you I was say, they're putting a full court press on this. Woo! Uh, what I was kind of trying to get at uh, during that last question about Tanner Brightman and the Canadian mm-hmm. Junior Basketball League, I was wondering if they were going to partner up and maybe. Play it out of there. Well, but. as Andrew said, he, he's got to keep it hush hush. Who knows what's it? We'll, There's we'll probably get the, some partnerships we'll going on. We'll get the juicy details. You know, we will. Next Andrew's time they're on. <laughs> Anyways, there's some great stuff happening, like we said in basketball. We're going to get into our blue bird block today. I did okay there. Uh, yeah. Now, I think, Max, I'm looking at our notes. Uh, did the Jays win tonight? Let's start there. We always let's say go that. there. Uh, now, <laughs> did, did the Jays win tonight? Yeah. So, um, just let me get that going here. Uh, the Blue Jays uh, have been iffy lately uh the bullpens had some issues uh there were some issues the other night with tyler chatwood uh he basically came in to relieve a ross stripling outing that a lot of people were ross dealt again uh yeah. he was dealing and wheeling That's and dealing cast bump, man. Uh, chatwood goes in and he, he did okay chatwood but nobody was warming up in the bullpen, and they left him in a little too long. And Clark, it, do I have to go to the Ryan Leslie thing with you one more time? He walked five guys. He was not doing good. Well, he's his first. He walked five first, yeah. guys. Okay, so he didn't do very good. Uh, but <laughs> but they didn't have anybody warming up, and that's the biggest issue here is that yeah. uh, the most tweets that I saw was, how, how did they not have a single pitcher come ready to come in if he struggled? Yep. So here we are, Max. Uh, like you said, the Blue Jays are hovering around 500. Mm-hmm. They're not out of a race by any stretch of the nope. uh, any stretch. They still don't have George Springer, as you said in your lovely intro with the rhymes. Yeah, uh, so where are we at? Give me a mid-season. Well, it's not even mid-season yet. That's Give me thing. a quarter, third season report uh, as what they're 40 or 50 games into the season right now. 40, mm-hmm. just over 40 games. Uh, what are you thinking about where they sit? Well, uh, at 27 and 55, I'm not sure if that's including tonight's win, 52, 53 games into the year. I think you hit it right on the head, though. Like, yeah, we're not even halfway into the season yet. We're hitting just into the summer months now. Um, we're start. We're starting to see the young guys really come into their own, though. Like, I really love what I'm seeing from Bobichet, Vlad Jr., perennial All Star at this point. People now leading the majors in home runs with, I believe, he hit his 17th dinger tonight, first of the year at Salem Field as uh, the Blue Jays uh, warm, warmly welcome their new home, second new home of the year with a 5-1 W over the Miami Marlins. I'm encouraged. I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to have those games, right? I think the, the toughest stretch was not this week necessarily. It was the previous week when, again, we, we touched on it, right? They they lost f- six games in a row, four of which were winnable ball games. 
And that's where, when you look at their disparity right now in the AL East, I think they're six games back of the division lead. Those four games would have been huge right now, but at the same time, we're 53 games in. Tyler Chatwood, he's been a pretty solid reliever for all but two of his outings this year. Um, and yeah, some heat's coming down on Charlie Montoyo, but the thing is about 162-game season, as Ross Stripling said, it's a long season. It's great to see that he's having success. Squad cast bump. Three of the four hey. starts I think that he's had have been uh, been extra special and doing exactly what the Blue Jays need of him. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know. At the end of the day, I'm still really encouraged with what I see. It's They're above 500. They're Again, you want to talk about a team that is meant to be at the start of their window that's not paying four contracts at 40 plus million dollars against the cap, unlike some teams. Uh, this I is think the they team are. that is in truly in the beginning of their winning window. So I'm really encouraged by what I see. I absolutely love this blue jersey. Every time I look at Every it, I'm time. just so excited to watch a ball game. Every time. Um, but anyways, I will quit talking and hand it over to you, my friend. What do you think about the So Toronto just remember, blue George Springer makes $25 million a year. Yeah, he so, played four games. No, I know, but you said four players, $40 million. Salary cap and baseball. Him and Gritchick sal- make $40 million. Sal- sal- salary cap and baseball is a little different, Clark. Just saying. Again, the uh, rainbows that you're... Springer makes more money than Matthews and Tavares combined. Oh, and here we go. As Ryan Barocco said I'm before just the show, I'm just there's saying. the pettiness of no, the you, Leafs. No, you started... You, you made it about the Leafs. I'm just defending them. You it's made it. It's all about the Leafs you right now. It. They blew a 3-1 series lead. Clark, they suck. You Sorry. S- you started this, Max. Okay, now I'm done. You're right. You're uh, right. It's over. Myron's just checking like in. He says, Romano is going to cause the Jays fans to develop high blood pressure. He <laughs> seems to always load the bases before getting the third out. Him or Delise? A heartbreak <laughs> kid uh, is what I think they called. What was Who was the heartbreak kids back in the day? Uh, basically, they would always give the, their fans like heart, like, sorry, Heart attack kid. Was it heart attack? I'm not sure. Kids? Are we that old to remember that? There was, yeah, there was a team back in the day that used to basically put their fans through torture every single it's game. Not the Toronto But they would Leafs? end up winning. No, it wasn't the Toronto. Okay. Uh, but Adam <laughs> Schultz said they almost blew another one. It, I'm looking at the score it's today. It's 5 1. What do you mean they, they almost it's blew over. another it's, one? It's over. It's a final. 5 1 is the final today well, against yeah, the Marlins. Minimal contact. Somebody uh, loaded the bases. They up, lost whatever. against the Indians 6 5 yesterday. Yep. Uh, or Sunday. Uh, they that beat was the, the Indians on. Oh, that was a doubleheader, right? So yeah. they they won the first game, they lost the second one mm-hmm. with Stripling. That was the Chatwood game, mm-hmm. uh, and then they won eleven two on Friday Smacked night. Smacked them. So I mean, they're they're one of those teams that's kind of up and down right now, and I think we've talked about it at nauseum. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think this is the year uh, where they can can we can anticipate them. You know, solidifying their roster a little bit. Taking a step forward. Taking a step forward, maybe making a move or two. uh, And I think that's it's on the horizon. We're just not there yet. They're still playing it cool. They're taking their time. And uh, as the famous Lou Lamorello once said, if you have time, take it. Uh, and I think that's. Who was just, he the general manager of the uh, team? He's at currently the, time the that general he had manager that of the quote. Islanders. But when did he say that quote, Clark? Uh, when he was the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> and it's all Cal- about the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's always about the Leafs. Right. If you don't know that by now, uh, it, I have, you I have to. I haven't quite figured it out. Yeah. I thought in my contract I said that we. it's like five minutes of Leaf talk. Hey, I think we're into I don't the know if you remember, you brought that up again. You're bringing up the <laughs> Leafs. You made the Leafs comparison. I just, I I just elaborated on it. Can I please get the Reese's Pieces rant on the oh, Maple Leafs? Come God. on, Clark. Can we not just cut to the chase? I understand you want to have the level-headedness, the 30-year-old, I am matured Mature. type of viewpoint. But what are you really feeling inside? That's what people want to see. I thought they you want wanted the me to. Steve Dangle reaction. What I, are you feeling? I thought you wanted me to do the Reese's Pieces rant. On like, the I could Toronto do that. Maple Leafs in the context no, of blowing thought... a three-one series lead, I want that rant. Yeah, okay. That's why I'm trying to simmer it up. I'm just stirring the pot, simmering, waiting yeah. for you to just blow the top off. Of it. Well, no, I mean, like Leslie, give me the pink-eyed ex-girlfriend. Everything the Ryan, pink-eyed. everything pink-eyed Ryan bro. Leslie, <laughs> careful. <laughs> everything Ryan Leslie said was true. Like Ryan Leslie was 100 percent nailed it. Yes. My approach is that I'm taking it. I'm looking at it. I'm trying to el- eliminate the 53 year thing. Okay. Because to me, that's not the way you should look at it. It's the way everyone is looking at it. And of course, Ryan, Ryan Leslie, being born in Ontario, has family members, has friends. Yes. Uh, he's a Canadian. He grew up. He said a Canadians fan. Mm-hmm. Of course, that's the way a lot of people think. The way I'm approaching it currently in my head to stay sane is that I'm only <laughs> looking at this last three or four or five years. And to me, they've been building up to this point where now they are a team that's going to be 
pushing to be number one in the division every year. They're a contending team. They have the pieces in place to build around. The Reese's pieces. Much, much like as the Washington Capitals did with Ovechkin and Backstrom. Those are their two guys, and they tinkered around them until they won a Stanley Cup. Pittsburgh, uh, they had Crosby and Malkin. They won the Cup in 2009, and then it took them a lot of years to tinker around those two guys mm -hmm. to win two in a row. Phil Kessel, thanks. Uh, but all, we're not talking about Stanley Cups. We're just talking about winning a playoff Winning a playoff round. round. I know, but you have to remember, <laughs> uh, Ovechkin lost in the first round lots of his years. Yeah. And then they, they made He's a couple of runs. also the mecca of hockey in Toronto. I think this is a market problem, dude. These in the capital of the United States of America, Washington. They're not the, they're not the hockey capital of the United States of America and Washington. Their name is the capitals. Oh, that's true. Uh, but uh, all this I'm saying is... This will be a squad is, after dark episode. Uh, yeah. I, I know this is where this is headed. My whole point with all of that is what I'm trying to say is that there's comparisons around the league to how they how people need to feel about this team. Right. And a lot of people are just jumping off the deep end. Like it's, Oh, yeah. It's, a lot of people are going way overboard yeah. with, that, with the trade everybody stuff. Of course. I get that. And, and I, yeah. there's part of me that y y you're trying to dig it up. There's part of me that's like mad we this if they would have just if they would have just won a gd round i wouldn't have to deal with any of this no, crap you wouldn't so there's that <laughs> to me the most disappointing thing and i don't know how much well, it's only 8 30 you're we not mad to, you're just disappointed oh yeah no but the for me the most disappointing part is that now as a leafs fan i'll say as leaf fans mm -hmm. i'll say i'll speak for the whole group here uh, all of us um, you basically do on tiktok ah uh, now thousand followers and counting not, not a big deal no, yeah. I got 100. That's pretty cool. You just hit 100. Just Congrats, 100. Max. Max, it's 1994. Hey, can I get the how about that for my 100 followers on TikTok? We don't have TikTok? that. We didn't pay. We don't have that in the budget. Damn it. Um, but the, 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 mis the disappointing part for all of us Leaf fans, and I've heard a lot of people echoing this on, on TikTok videos, like you said, or across social media, is that now we have to take the brunt of all this from all the other fan bases and all the media and all the... Leaf fans are the ones who have to deal with this. I know the players obviously do. Oh, but poor me. Oh, well, no. I'm a lowly Toronto Maple Leafs fan. and I'm just saying, look at look what you're doing right now, Max. That's I know, what, and that's, that's why I'm that's so happy that they lost. i got to be honest, Clark. I'm happy that they no, lost because the jokes I, are fun. I think that's what's <laughs> killing me the most is that all they had to do was win a round. They, they were that's up, all they needed to do. They were up 3-1. They had a great chance to get to the third round this year if they would have just made it past the first round, and they blew it. They like epic proportions, and it always with the Leafs has to be historic. Have you ever noticed that? Every always. single thing where it's like always. every time the Leafs do something bad, it's like a record-breaking thing or it's a historic the, it's thing. It's the emergency backup, or it's the team coming off COVID, or it's the yeah, like, and that's just recent. Van, the Canucks not playing in a month or two to months. Boston, like it's always got to be uh, epic. Collapse. The one that was yeah. amazing to me was the Blue Jackets last year. Mm -hmm. There hadn't been a series or a, a playoff game or something where a team had blown a three nothing lead and then come, come back, back from a three nothing team. lead and then they got shut out the next game yeah uh, it's like and then to this one uh carry price is the first ever 10 million dollar player mm -hmm. to ever win a series against the leafs uh it, it just always seems to be every like you said the emergency backup david ayers we don't have to go into that uh every single time something bad happens it just has to be this historic proportion and, it, and it, it's just always happened everybody's first goal in their career is against the what's, leafs what's, what's that uh <laughs> <laughs> like it just happens all every the future time. toronto maple leafs always score their first goal yeah. against the toronto maple Leafs. like pretty much you can book it like every single throughout the series season the regular season i'm talking about if they're playing the Ottawa Senators. Oh, they just called up this guy who's 32. He's never played an NHL game in his career. He played in Europe most of his career, and this is his first NHL game. He's going to score a goal or, like, get a hat trick. Or this goalie uh, just came off of a thing where he hadn't played professional hockey in five years, and he's, like, the fourth stringer, and he's just got called up. Wait, they and had that, too, on top of the They had an injury. I don't know. I'm just giving you examples. Like, it just seems like it always happens. The fact happens. that there are so many. I know. You know what? I empathize with you a little bit. I really do. At the end of the day, I cheer for an out-of-market team that does not have any shine whatsoever. Hey, you're bold. You cheer for the team in the mecca of hockey. And there's a lot of Leaf fans out there. And I think a lot of us from the side of the non-Leafs fans, it's the, where were you guys the last 15 years? And then you all come out at once like, oh, this team's amazing. Oh, right. look at us go. Look at us go. Oh, totally. And that's just, and it's because there is so many of you that just come from the show. It's like a quiet place. Have you seen that movie with John John yeah. Krasinski? You have to be, the Leafs have just been quietly tiptoeing around for the last 10 to 15 years. Oh. And now all of a sudden, oh man, I'm on fire tonight. But either way. You're crushing it. It's it's tough, man. You know what? At the end of the day, I was, I was saying to you, I was genuinely hoping that this wouldn't be what it turned into, but it's made for great content. So I'm also on that team too. Oh yeah. 
But where where did they go? And again, let's let's get into this for five minutes before we wrap up with the guys. Yeah. So we've heard it all from Elliot Friedman, Jeff Merrick, J Jason Bourne, Justin Bourne. We've, we've <laughs> oh my God, it's oh Jason Bourne. God, it's Jason uh, Bourne. Just can we, just before yes, we do that, yes. Myron, <laughs> Myron's calling us out. LOL. I thought you guys were talking about the Jays. Myron, you're right. This was the <laughs> oh. that was the Bluebird block. <laughs> it's transitioned. <laughs> Uh, just a quick, I'll just wrap it up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Shout out to our good buddies at RBI Baseball. Mm -hmm. We were we were done. We just didn't close it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, it's kind of like the Blue Jays bullpen. Woo! Or the Leafs when they have a 3-1 series lead. <laughs> uh, are you looking for a way to improve your skills on the baseball diamond? Are your kids in need of some personal training, skill building, or private coaching? Check out RBI Training Center today. It's Saskatchewan's. I always want to say Southern, but it's Saskatchewan's, Saskatchewan's premier baseball training and softball training facility. Check out their website, Facebook, or Instagram today. Their Instagram is hot, hot fire, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, at RBI, they rise above the rest. I think we're going to have a guest from RBI next week. Tanner coming in next week? Possibly. I'll, I'll, Maybe. I'll finally. I'll, gonna, hey, I'll, I'll place a call. Let's grease some wheels. I'll place a call. We're, we'll grease some wheels. Okay, okay. Anyways, so the Predators are going to go out and get Jack Eichel. What do the Leafs do now <laughs> in the no, offseason? Marner's that... getting traded for Jack Eichel. That's what everybody's saying. Okay, but... Marner's also getting traded for Matthew Kachuk and Elias Lindholm yeah, from Calgary. Marner's been traded 14 uh, Marner's times. Marner's right? also going to go to the LA Kings. Marner's going to go to the Rangers. Matthews is going to go to the Rangers. Uh, Keefe's going to get fired. Tortorella's coming in, I've heard. Oh, wow. Uh, I've heard that uh, Jim Rutherford is taking over for Kyle Dubas. Oh, look at uh, that. Yeah, no, it's all happening. It's all happening. So anyways, what were you saying? Can you trade a player 14 times like that? Uh, it, watch, it's just going to be a bunch of yeah. conditional picks yeah, just yeah, circulating right. back. By He's going to share. By the time his contract is over, if Mitch plays 22 games before yeah. we deal him... The, He'll play 11 games with this team yeah. and 7 games for this team, and it'll just rotate like a circus. That's fun to think about. Um, but anyways, so yeah. just to wrap it up, though, again, this is where I do want to go and tap into your sports knowledge okay, as let's somebody do it. that is very, very valued in terms of your Leafs' opinions. Again, I like the level-headedness. I like the measured approach. I try. You try. So where does this team go? We talked about it a little bit over text last night, obviously, when the wound was still very, very fresh. I think it probably hasn't scabbed over quite yet. But no. What, what do you do? do? As you alluded to, Dubas built this team to win, and they didn't win. Yeah. So where do you go? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rest on the words of Steve Dangle. Stephen Dangle Glenn. Uh, Hopefully we can get him on in the offseason. That'd be excellent. I don't know if he's going to want to talk. <laughs> Give it a couple but weeks. Give him some wheels. Some send him a gift basket. Right. It'll be all right. He, you know, he might appreciate that. Now, mm -hmm. he basically had a 25-minute video he posted oh, late last night. Oh, 9-2 to Nashville. We forgot that one as well. That was another epic. Sorry. Continue. Yeah. Uh, yeah you're right. Uh, <laughs> there's more than that. There's more. Now, 5-1 uh, to Ottawa this year. That was another when one, too. When they were leading. Yeah. 5-1, they were leading. Can we and they just lost. have like a segment where we just go through <laughs> we just all, go over graphic, all of those? It's just the least. Sorry, like, Lee fans. I don't are just think we have killing enough them tonight. Like, we could fill that screen with just text killing them tonight. The... <laughs> uh, okay, hold on. I'm, I missed something here. This is falling so uh, far off the rails. It's, I don't know if it's salvageable. Okay, I don't know who posted this. I think it's Alan. Uh, hey, Max, what's funnier, Falcons jokes or Leafs jokes? Oh, Alan, great question. Uh, to and answer now your Janelle question. is coming to my defense, and she's saying, as a Falcons and Leaf fan, friendship off. Alan, you're out. You're out of the circle. Uh, sorry, Alan. Alan, I'm sorry, but Leafs fans in this country know that Leafs jokes always sting more. Yeah, they Leafs jokes are better more. because there's more. Like, don't get me wrong, the Falcons collapse was absolutely epic on the scale of Heather Two. I'm dreamt of. Where'd that line come from? That's a gr I don't know. I heard that from a show. I stole that from a show. I don't know which one. Either way, no, Alan. For Toronto Maple Leafs fans, for Toronto Maple Leafs haters, much like myself. Just kidding. They're all right. I've, you've you've made me. Grow you were on an the honorary Maple Leaf Leafs. fan like uh, twelve hours yeah, but ago, when they and play now like that. Long story short. Anyways, Alan, the Leafs jokes will always be funny. Leafs jokes will always be funny. In this country, Leafs jokes will always be funny. We know what hockey means to this country. Yeah. No, that's that's the case. Now you said, um, where do they go from here? Yes. So the, the words of Steve Dangle, seconds. Stephen Dangle Glenn, uh, is that he basically said like, what would you change? Honestly, mm -hmm. this year, what would you change with the, how the team was put together? Uh, they wanted more veteran leadership. They went out and got Joe Thornton. Jason Spezza was, was there. Excellent. Jason Spezza was. Jason awesome. Spezza was a stud. Uh, they went out and got Nick Foligno. They brought in Wayne Simmons. So they had that group of guys. They signed TJ Brody, who was uh, outstanding as well. Scored a goal in this series. Scored a goal, a big one, a big one. Uh, Zach Bogosian got brought in, who just won a Stanley Cup. So they did that. Uh, they wanted more grit. Again, Wayne Simmons. Uh, Zach Hyman had a great year again. Brought uh, in Galchenyuk midway through the season. Brought in Galchenyuk, who showed me something 
I was not expecting nope, out of Gil Chanik. I thought he was going to come in and try to dipsy doodle. He was a Zach Hyman clone for a couple yeah. of weeks there. Like he was playing very good. I'm impressed. I hope they bring him back. Honestly, mm-hmm. uh, you know they wanted to uh, play better defensively. They did. Uh, they de- they definitely improved defensively this year. They wanted better goaltending. Jack Campbell comes out of he nowhere. Was great. Seventeen two and two. Great stats. Nine thirty plus save percentage in the playoffs. A one eighty eight or something goals against average. Mm-hmm. Better numbers than Carey Price. They got it. So what would you change? So uh, and Steve said last night on his video, like, uh, you know, there's already these rumors about Seth Jones, and there's already these rumors about Eichel. You said or whatever, but. They've been doing that for 30 years. They've been doing, they've been tinkering and going out and spending a ton and bringing in all these big names. Tanked for Matthews. Like, they tanked. Like, I'm thinking back to the early 2000s years when they didn't win in the playoffs. They mm-hmm. would go out and add Joe Newendike and Gary yeah. Roberts and Shane Corson and mm-hmm. uh, Ron Francis and yeah. Brian Leach and. Uh, we could go on. Phil Housley, like all those guys. Brian Boyle. For, well, for yeah, recent, a couple for years ago. Memory. Tom, but that was Predators did that, that too. Was, it didn't work out. That was when they were very young in that process. Yes. Like that was a different. Absolutely. But Brian Boyle, exactly. Thomas Buchanan. Like Steve Thomas. Steve Thomas, my boy. <laughs> the reason I like the Leafs in the first place. That's Thanks right. a lot, Steve. Uh, but anyway, Steve Glynn Dangle said that basically, <laughs> like you know, they've been doing that. So how is it any different? How would doing that again be any different? Uh, so my personal thought is, and this is where I'm trying to, you know, steer my I'm trying to fix it. I'm, st- I'm steering my ship down this lane right mm-hmm. now. Is I feel like they need to run it back with this group. Like, okay. And why do they deserve that? This group didn't do a good enough job. Why would they do that? Clearly, it's not going to be the same group. They have tw- like 12 unrestricted free agents or something this year. Yeah. Uh, the core group is signed for a few more years, uh, so they've got that going for them. If if they want. Darren said it good on Rod Peterson's show today. He did have a very good take Uh, on it. He said, you have to get your core and you have to go with your core. You have to let them do it. If they're not going to do it at some point, you have to make the decision to get rid of them. But again, I go back to the Capitals. I go back to the Penguins. I go back to all these different examples. Tampa Bay even. After they got swept by Columbus, there was a lot of people that said, well, Tampa's probably going to blow it up now. If they just got swept by Columbus, they kept the same team together won the Stanley Cup. I'm not saying the Leafs are going to win the Stanley Cup next year. I'm saying I think they need to keep this group together and continue to tinker the extra parts, just like Tampa and Pittsburgh and all these teams did, until it works. And I don't think giving up on guys when they're 23, 24 years old is the way to success. I don't think trading them like a Mitch Marner for an older guy who's maybe 29 or 30. So not for Ryan Johansson? (laughs) That is not. If that happens, I might burn my jerseys. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm kidding. Uh, hey, Ryan was a great playoff performer. He had a point again. Sure. Come on. Yeah. Uh, no, that's you're Which right. Which is something that, that they've said but anyways, you struggle with. So Exactly. Uh, we're getting some stars. Did you stars. get your therapy session? Did I, I don't give know. you I what feel you like, needed tonight, my friend? I feel like I could say so much more. I and got a you few know jokes I can. In. I sympathize with you. Hey, at the end of the day, it's another season. It's another first round yeah. exit. But hey, as they say in every single city that doesn't hoist the big silver mug, there's always next year. Right. Uh, Myron is uh, just adding to the list. The longest goal distance-wise in NHL history was on Vesa Toskala uh, back in the day when he got scored on from their own end Another and it bounced. epic one, hey? That was oh, a good one, wow. too. Jordan Blodgett, thanks, Jordan, says, I'm excited to see Connor Bedard's first goal against the Maple Leafs in a couple years. Hey, maybe it'll be for the Toronto Maple Leafs if things keep Oof. going the way it's going. Oof. Uh, we'll see. Uh, now, what else we got? Janelle Barkman, in the words of Connor McDavid, we don't need to rewrite the whole ship. Same for the Leafs. Uh, I, I'm in that boat. Myron saying the Leafs need to employ a psychotherapist. I think we all need a psychotherapist, Myron. Uh, but I thought the, they did. It was called 10 million Leaf the fans. Team, <laughs> the team is built well. They just seem to hit a wall mentally, and it kind of seemed like that happened this year. And <laughs> Patrick Janix is saying the Leafs should tank for Connor Bernard. <laughs> Straight, everybody. It's over. Uh, but <laughs> there's my – I don't know. I hope that answered your question. I hope that answered everyone's question as to – I've had a lot of people asking how I'm doing. And answered it for tonight. Tomorrow's I, another day. There's a long summer ahead of us, and we'll talk about all sorts of stuff, not just with the Leafs. There's a lot of... Qu- this summer is very fascinating. I'm going to try to get out of this because it is almost 845, so I want to get out of here before that for sure. But 
the, we talked to Ryan Leslie. The Calgary Flames have a fascinating summer ahead of them. Uh, the Oilers, what are they, they have some question marks. The league is a whole, man. July 21st expansion draft, July 23rd. Two days later, the entry draft. Yeah. Free agency opens a week out, or two weeks the after Wednesday that. The Wednesday after that, whatever either, that is. Either way, like it's it's going to be a very, very exciting offseason for a yeah. lot of teams, especially with a flat cap. That was the other thing, I guess, That's we That's the other to. thing. Elliot Friedman is speculating, like, this is what he's heard. The cap is staying flat, regardless of the U.S. TV deals. Right. Buckle in, people. Five more years of a flat cap. Maybe a little less. Potentially. Maybe a little less, but that's to me that means at least three years of eighty one and a half million dollars. So that Teams was are another have point to make. That was another point that got brought up about the way Kyle Dubas has built this team. Mm-hmm. If we can just take another thirty seconds. <laughs> I won't take long, I promise. But he signed you guys got your sleeping bags back there? He signed all the contracts with the thought process of there's gonna be no pandemic. And the cap is going to go up to 90 million, 95 million, 100 million in the next, by the time these contracts are over. Who knows what it would have been? Mm-hmm. Uh, we can't, there's no way to know how, no. what it would have been. Now that's all changed. So, Steve's point again, shout out to Steve, Steve Dangle. He's my go to guy. Uh, if, if you're a Leafs fan, chances are he's your go to guy as well. Yeah. Uh, and please continue doing LFRs, Steve. I know yeah, it's, I heard, it's a I heard rough that time. too. He's I like, I don't know if I can come back next year. We know he'll be back. Yeah. He'll Anyways, be back. Uh, he said, like, now things have changed. So does their plan change? And we're going to have to see that this summer. This summer is going to be the test of that. Uh, do they change their plan? Do they break up the group? Do they ship out Marner? Do they ship out a Nylander? Did you catch what he said about the process? Did he say he didn't care about the process or something anymore? He's done with the process. He's done with the process. As I'm sure yeah. most people are. Yeah. It's a nice marketing tagline, but when you have this happen, it's tough to believe in yeah. the process. I get it. I get it. Now you but need the W's. That's where we're at. So uh, I personally believe stick it out with this group again. Uh, continue to run with it because I feel like eventually it will break through. But they're going back to the Atlantic yeah, next year. That's, that was my They're going to probably point. be in a division with Tampa, Florida, Boston. Boston. Uh, who else was in their division before? Detroit's it's- coming up on their heels. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hang on on the Detroit talk. Sorry, Darnell. Montreal, who just beat Darnell Mike, Theris, so. you can wait a couple more years. You had 25 good years. Hang tight. <laughs> but we're going to sign off for tonight, I think, Max. How are you feeling so. about that? That sounds uh, fantastic, my friend. We, tomorrow, had a, we had a good therapy session. It was good. It was a good talk. I hope everybody enjoyed that. Uh, thanks to Ryan Leslie. Thanks to the guys from mm-hmm. Hoop Life for coming in and dropping a huge announcement today fantastic. on the show. Uh, tomorrow on the Rod Peterson Show, we are going to be talking to Dave Campbell from Ooh. Six... Oh, by the way, the Edmonton Elks. Oh, yeah. They're a team now. <laughs> the Edmonton Elks are the a thing. The double E is back. The double E is back. So the, Dave Campbell is joining us from 630 Ched. Uh, radio in Edmonton. He's the color analyst for the Edmonton Elks, and we're going to talk about that with him. Uh, plus, uh, I'm blanking. Rich Sutter is joining us on the show You're tomorrow. You're in your Leafs head. I'm sorry. I totally, I, I, I can read your thoughts right now, and I totally yep. just took you to a place. That's okay. That <laughs> Rich Sutter is going to join us tomorrow. Next week on this broadcast, on this platform, uh, guess who texted me the other day? Just to actually think it was today. Just out of the blue? Tim Leeper. Tim Leeper texted you. And what you. did you text? You told me like what last I, Thursday. His ears we should must get have Tim Leeper. Bur- man. So I don't. I'm That's not. I'm awesome. not saying he's on next week for sure, but I'm working on it. Tim, grease, grease, Tim Leeper. As he's, I'll grease with Tanner. You grease Good. with Tim. How's that? Might sound? be a baseball well, show a next week. It's a TNT show. Uh, from the basement of the bunker, we're signing off. I'm producer Clark, Mad Max over here, producer Allen, director Jordan, doing the drums in the back. The truly essential members of this squad. Oh, absolutely. By the way, shout out to Jordan. Uh, yeah. fix the whole show. Like, he was a NASCAR pit crew. Can we give Jordan his shine for 30 seconds? Yeah. He's the one controlling Jordan, the camera, so Jordan, we're going to do it. Do you want to take 30 seconds Jordan, and talk about NASCAR? For us to, do you want to come out here and talk want, NASCAR? Yeah, do you want to come out and talk about it? No, he says he's good. Either he's, way, he was like a NASCAR pit crew he, coming in. Honestly, I think stuff. he just wants to leave. He does want to leave. Uh, <laughs> Jordan, <laughs> so, fantastic. We couldn't do it without yeah, my Jordan friend fixed and Alan, everything. Always like, great work. Three minutes before we went on air, Jordan fixed a ton of stuff. Thank you, Jordan. Mm-hmm. Uh, our friends at Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions, IKS Media, Vigor Lifestyles, Hoop Life Basketball, of course, and uh, RBI Regina Baseball and Softball Training. Uh, we'll see you next week right here. We are going to have a weekend show. We've said it a couple times. We've... Me and Max have had a lot of stuff going on. Max yeah. in particular. There's a lot going on in our lives right now. Good things, uh, but good busy things. things. Uh, busy but things. Busy but things. now that our, both of our teams are out of the playoffs, uh, we're getting to slow it's, down a little it's bit. It's time so, to take that thing right there and do a lot of golfing. swinging with it. Uh, so club. this weekend, I think the sounds of it, we're going to do a Sunday morning show. Sunday morning. Uh, we're going to do our weekend hockey show, Squad After Dark, but it'll be in the morning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> squad so, pre-pre-dark. The pre-dark show. So <laughs> we'll have that on Sunday. Hang tight for that. Technically is after dark if you think about it 
if we do it at eight in the morning, morning is dark after dark. Four hours before that, so it's after dark. Why is a why is a pickle a pickled cucumber, but nothing else that's pickled is called a pickle? Think about that. That's your homework until next episode. Uh, but exploded. we are signing off. Max had a closing lyric, but he didn't write it down. Uh, what was the song we were gonna sing? No, I was gonna. I left that out. I I just wanted to show you. Everybody saw it on social yesterday. Thank you, Squadcast members, uh, fanalists, everybody out there for t- hanging out with us tonight. We'll see you on Tuesday next week and on the weekend on the Squadcast before after pre dark. See you care, next time. Everyone.